Hey mamas, breastfeeding is such a beautiful, rewarding bonding experience that you can have with your baby, but sometimes it can be really challenging, especially if you're doing it for the first time. There's lots of questions involved and wondering, hey, can I even do this? So in this video, I am covering a lot of frequently asked questions about breastfeeding. I'm Bridget and I'm a doula in the San Francisco Bay Area and I love helping moms love their birth. So I know a big question that moms ask themselves after birth or even before is, am I going to be able to breastfeed or what's it going to be like? So in this video, I'm going to be covering some of those questions that moms frequently ask around birth or after birth um, about breastfeeding. So a big question that mamas ask, or at least is in the back of their mind, is will I be able to breastfeed? And it's, you know, just a little bit of self-doubt, like, I've never done this before, like, will I be able to do this? The short answer to that question is yes. It is very rare that mamas are physiologically unable to nurse their babies. Now, I do understand that there are really big challenges that sometimes have to be overcome in order for a mom to breastfeed her babies, or maybe, you know, she's not feeling support. And so those are typical reasons why moms will choose not to breastfeed um, because those challenges do seem really hard to overcome. One of those challenges might be, you know, my nipple is flat or it's an inverted nipple and maybe you are pregnant and you're thinking, oh my gosh, like, is my nipple like that? Well, there's a test that you can do um, that will help you see what your, you know, nipple is like with stimulation that a baby would give. So it's like a pinch or a rub test just so that your nipple is stimulated enough to see if it either comes out of the breast or if it remains flat or inverted. Um, and if that's the case, you might, you know, if you're pregnant and you're, you know, wanting to get help for later, you know, that might be something that you get started on now and finding a lactation specialist that you um, connect with. Or if you are having that issue right now and being like, oh, maybe that's why, you know, it's hard to breastfeed or my baby's, you know, not latching as well. Um, you know, talk to a specialist about that. Um, so that's one of the challenges that comes along with breastfeeding. So the other big challenge that women often face is the question and the doubt, will I have enough milk? Um, and it, like I said at the beginning, it is very rare that women physiologically are unable to produce enough milk for their baby. And if that is the case, it's because of insufficient glandular tissue. And like I said, it's very rare um, that women have that issue. So if you are, you know, having that doubt in your mind or that question, let me reassure you that you are probably very more than likely able to produce enough milk for your baby. And another big challenge that mamas face when it comes to breastfeeding is a difficult latch. Um, and that's where baby, you know, comes to the breast and, you know, maybe it's really uncomfortable. And so, you know, you have cracked, sore nipples um, and it's just super uncomfortable. And so that's one of the challenges that has to be overcome. And sometimes if it isn't, leads to stopping breastfeeding prematurely or before you want to. So as far as baby's latch goes, I'm not gonna cover that in depth in this video. I'm going to make a whole nother video for you guys all about baby's latch and how to get a great latch for your breastfeeding experience. Um, so stay tuned for that. But with these challenges that I've talked about, I really do believe that the more answers that you can get for the questions that you have, the better equipped and confident you're gonna be for your breastfeeding experience. So let's hop into our questions right now. So one of the first questions that I often get from moms right after baby has been born is, are they ready to nurse yet? And typically the response that I give them is not quite yet. The only reason why I say that is because think of the crazy transition that baby has just had for being in one place where it's nice and dark and warm and cozy for nine long months and now they've come out of your birth canal and now they're in this world which is, you know, bright, it's a little bit cold, um, they're taking in all of these things from their senses and so babies kind of need a little bit of time to adjust before they're ready for that first nurse. That being said though, babies are usually ready to nurse within the first hour of being born but sometimes it's longer so don't be freaked out if, you know, by, you know, 60 minutes after birth, baby hasn't fed yet. Babies don't need to eat for the first, like, several hours. Their tummies are still really small, um, but they'll start showing hungry cues when they're ready to eat. So those hungry cues are, like, doing their tongue out like that or, you know, thrashing their head, like, looking for something. If they're crying, um, those are all cues that are showing you, okay, baby's hungry and they're ready for that first latch, ready for that first nurse. So they're ready for that first nurse, and then you're asking yourself, well, do I have enough milk? I just gave birth, like how am I supposed to have enough milk for my baby? 
The amazing thing is, is that your body has been producing milk since the 16th week of your pregnancy. So even though your body has been producing milk since 16 weeks into your pregnancy, your boobs aren't ginormous because your milk hasn't fully come in. So what do I mean by your milk hasn't fully come in yet? So after a baby is born, the first milk that they're going to get from you uh, from breastfeeding is that colostrum. And it's this really thick, super nutritive, dense milk that's going to like give them all the benefits of like all of the best things in the world. <laughs> colostrum is literally liquid gold and it's this really thick substance that you know you don't actually have a lot of but has a lot of nutrition in like packed in those little droplets. And at the beginning, baby really doesn't need a whole lot of food. Their belly is like a little tiny marble. Um, and so it really only needs that really thick liquid gold that colostrum gives them. Within those first 72 hours then after baby has been nursing very frequently, um, your milk is going to come in. And that's when you start experiencing those really full, heavy breasts that often we hear as engorgement. When you feel your milk come in, it's just a really good and reassuring sign that, okay, my milk is here, I am making plenty for my baby, they are getting everything that they need, and so you can really ease into trusting your body that it is giving your baby everything that it needs. Another question that I get from mamas is, how often should I nurse in order to build supply? The rule of thumb is about every two to three hours, depending on baby's hunger cues. So sometimes it's going to be sooner than two or three hours, sometimes it'll be three and a half hours, but I really wouldn't go much further than those three, three and a half hours, um, just because you need to make sure baby is getting that nutrition from that breast milk and also so that you are frequently expressing milk and getting milk out of the breast so that your, your breast can um, be refilling that milk up again. The bottom line when it comes to breastfeeding and building that supply is the more you are able to um, remove from the breast and how frequently you do it is going to determine how much is being signaled to the breast to replenish. So basically, the more baby nurses, the more frequently they nurse, the more your boobs are going to be signaled to make more milk so baby has enough to drink. Now along those lines, if you know that you're going back to work or to school or going to be away from your baby for an extended period of time in the next few weeks or months, um, and maybe you want to start building a small stash now or just making sure you have enough milk in order to build um, that stash later, it's not a bad idea to start pumping. Now. I'm gonna do a whole nother video on pumping as well, so be on the lookout for that. But generally, you're not going to need to start pumping right away. Um, that can cause too much milk to be produced and cause overproduction, um, which you know can be problematic for some people and lead to you know a lot of discomfort. Um, so just give yourself like three weeks, a month, a little bit longer to just kind of you know figure it out with baby and and learn you know how you guys are going to work together and then maybe start implementing some pumping sessions if you are going to be pumping it's a good idea though to start before six weeks because six weeks is when your breast milk supply really starts to regulate where it knows okay baby is taking this much out so i'm going to produce this much um and so being able to start six weeks before or six weeks um after baby is born is just a good time um you know before your milk starts regulating Another question that mamas ask is how long should I be nursing for? Um, you know, I've been nursing for this long on this side. Do I need to switch to the other side? Like is 15 minutes enough or is five minutes enough? How long should I be nursing? And the answer that I want to give to you for that is don't worry about timing your breastfeeding sessions. I know for me, when I first started nursing my daughter, it was kind of like calming to time how much she was eating on each side um, but the more I got accustomed to breastfeeding the less and less I did that because I realized that it really fluctuated and using a timer didn't really dictate how much she was getting sometimes when she was really hungry she would eat really quickly and so she would empty the breast faster and she would want to go to the other side or you know sometimes she wasn't as hungry and more sleepy and so she would just nurse for a little bit and then fall asleep and so I realized that timing wasn't really a good indicator for how f how full baby was from nursing baby is going to let you know when they are done nursing you know sometimes babies are going to get full from just one breast or sometimes they're going to empty one 
on and they're going to start being a little bit fussy or um, they're just going to be showing signs that they want to go to the other side. Um, and so baby is going to let you know that, you know, they've emptied one breast and they want to go to the next. Another thing with timing how much baby is nursing on one side or both sides is that sometimes it cuts baby short from getting all of um, the good stuff from the breast milk. So um, breast milk has fore milk and hind milk and hind milk is what's in the back of the breast and it's really fatty um, and really good for the baby. Um, four milk is really good for the baby too and it's that um, you know beginning milk it's a lot thinner um, but it's really important that baby gets that hind milk and so sometimes if you're timing and you're like okay it's been eight minutes so you must be done nursing on this side you know they might have only gotten that four milk and not so much that hind milk which is really important for them too. But I know you're probably asking yourself, but what's a good gauge of time when I'm nursing my baby? I know when I was a first time mom, I was like, I really kind of want to know like what a good like range of time is. So I usually say anywhere between 10 and 40 minutes is a good nursing session. Um, you know, at the beginning, you might have closer to that 40 minutes um, or maybe it's just 20 minutes, um, you know, and I'm talking about in total. So, you know, if you're nursing your baby for 40 minutes on one side um, and then you know, 40 minutes on the other side, baby probably isn't um, nursing so much as, or, you know, eating so much as um, just resting at the breast and doing those little, like, like little birdie sucks. Um, and so you really want to make sure that while you are breastfeeding, they're taking those, you know, really vigorous nutritive sucks, um, you know, and that can be anywhere between 10 minutes and 40 minutes, um, I say is usually a good range of time for nursing. The next question is how do I know my baby is getting enough milk? And this is a big question and kind of a big doubt that moms often have to overcome and really trust their body and trust their baby. Um, and sometimes when that support um, isn't there, this challenge is overwhelming um, and it often leads to moms doubting themselves and stressing themselves out um, and not continuing to breastfeed anymore. So I want to reassure you with some answers. So a big one to look for in determining whether or not your baby is getting enough milk is their wet diaper count and their dirty diaper count. Um, and so your doctor is probably going to give you um, a chart that says, hey, your baby should be wetting this many diapers a day at, in the first day, um, this many in the second day. And usually by day four, they're going to want to see plenty of wet diapers and at least um, four poopy diapers. Um, and so it's just, you know, if you see that your baby is making those um, um, wet diapers and those poopy diapers and it's just a really good and reassuring sign that my baby is getting the milk that he or she needs. The other one that is like huge is if your baby is gaining enough weight. And I know for me, even when I went to those pediatrician appointments, like in the first few days and I saw my daughter was gaining weight, um, I was still like, she's not getting enough milk. And my husband was like, Bridget, look at the evidence. It's all pointing in the direction that she is getting enough milk. And so I just wanna encourage you with that. Um, you know, with, with the wet and dirty diapers and with the gaining weight, it's all evidence that's pointing you that yes, baby is getting the milk that he or she needs. Another way that you are going to be reassured that baby's getting enough milk is if you feel milk leaving the breast. So when once your milk has been stimulated, once baby has been at like you've been having baby at your breast for um, like a couple minutes or you know sometimes even 30 seconds, you'll feel your milk come in. Now not all women feel this, but um, most women do. It's like this tingly, like firming sensation um, in your breast and that shows you, okay, my milk's come in. And once baby is, you know, vigorously um, sucking at your breast and you can tell that they're getting like, they're swallowing, you know, you're hearing sounds of them, you know, filling their mouth up and swallowing it down into their belly, you're gonna feel your, your your breasts like soften, um, you know, it's not going to be as like firm anymore. Um, and so that's a reassuring sign that, okay, yes, I had milk come into my breast, I felt it, and now I can feel it, you know, re being removed from my breast as well. Last but not least, one of the best ways to know if baby is getting enough milk is are they satisfied? So, you know, after they've been nursing, do they look up at you and just kind of like smile and you're like, are you smiling at me or is it gas? Like, I don't know, but it's really cute. Or they're milk drunk and they're just kind of like, like, uh, you know, <laughs> that like funny milk drunk face. Um, there's lots of memes if you don't know what I'm talking about, so go check those out. Um, but it's just, is baby satisfied? Or, you know, maybe if they're still, you know, really crying, maybe they need to go to the other side and then they'll get that milk drunk. But, you know, it's, 
you know, you being able to see my baby is satisfied. And so I'm reassured that they are getting um, all the milk that they, that they want. Last question when it comes to breastfeeding that I often get is does breastfeeding hurt? And the answer that I want to give you is no. Now, a lot of times for first time moms who have not breastfed before, it's a totally new and kind of overwhelming sensation at first. And so if you are feeling pain during that initial latch, um, you know, when baby comes on and you're like, it's like a little bit toe curling and you're like, <gasps> like I can't breathe, oh my gosh, this hurts. You know, if it's that initial and then it goes away as you breastfeed, that's okay because that's that's gonna fade off um, as you know you become more accustomed to baby sucking on your boob all the time. Um, but if that pain is prolonged all the way through that nursing session, then you know, that is not a correct latch. So that shows that there's something going on um, that needs to be fixed. And so if you are experiencing a lot of pain, during your whole breastfeeding um, session, then it shows that something needs to be fixed. So no, breastfeeding shouldn't hurt. It should be a really rewarding and beautiful bonding experience, like I said at the beginning. If you are having some troubles, I have a latch video coming up, so make sure you stay tuned. Hit the little bell, um, subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos because I really want you to get the help and support that you need if you are facing any challenges, uh, challenges in breastfeeding. So I hope this information that I've given you has helped answer some of the questions that you have. If you know a mom who is asking these similar questions or, you you know, you just have a feeling it might be floating around in her mind, make sure you send it on to her. Um, let it be an encouragement to her. Let yourself be an encouragement to her for sending this to her and thinking of her. That'd be really sweet. Um, but thanks for watching this one. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the little bell, and I will see you in the next video, guys.